the program. Our silent interpreter for the night is David Agondoa. We start with that standoff, with the unabashed refusal of donations from President William Ruto by the Catholic Church this past Sunday. A new yet familiar path between the church and the government was inevitably drawn. In response, State House says that it has not received the funds meant to be refunded by the Soweto Church. President William Ruto's actions are under the microscope of the church, which seemed to be his stronghold during the campaign season. We want to start there first by bringing in former presidential candidate Ruben Kigan, who's joining us from the United States of America. Uh, good evening. Good to see you. Um, I want to start off from where we are as a country, where we didn't expect this to happen, that would have a place where the church is in contestation with the political class. Did you see this coming? Uh, yes, I saw it coming because that has always been the position of the church. And uh, what happened in 2022 was an exception. Uh, the church has always spoken against bad governance and uh, abuse of power. And the church has always been on the side of the people. If you remember uh, in the Moi era, it is the church that brought the Moi era down, actually. Um, and you remember during the post-election violence, the church uh, stood with the people. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, even in the recent past, uh, there have been very strong voices, but they've been muffled. And so what uh, the Kenya uh, uh, Conference of Catholic Bishops did was voice a long-standing tradition. If you remember the guitarists, the uh, the Ndingi Mwana and Zekis, if you remember Njoya, and uh, you remember people like Okulu, Manasseh, Skuria, etc. They have always spoken uh, for the church and uh, put the voice of the church out there. You may remember a magazine that was being published by uh, Mr. Bidan Bugwa called Beyond. He was a Christian journalist and he was actually jailed. He was uh, sent to Manyani Maximum Prison together with David McCarley and the rest because of standing for the people. That has always been the place of the church. The problem is that the government doesn't listen. In this particular state, a section, not the entire, a section of the evangelical part actually played, um, you know, uh, a bad game by oh, supporting Mr. President Mr. Ruto. Mr. Higame, just uh, th there is still not full separation between sort of the church and the state, if you like. Um, we still see the political class still have access to the podiums in the church, the pulpit, if you like. Um, there is absolutely no agreement on that. So really, I think we're just getting a bit of our, our, our ourselves here. So the Catholic bishops refusing the funds is one, but still, the church is still stuck with the political class, if you like. So if you wanted a comment on whether politicians should be, you know, finding the pulpits uh, to make their political rhetoric, then that's a no-no. They should never be, uh, you know, uh, uh, accepted to make those political pronouncements from the pulpit. And those that have done that have actually been doing that against the church because pulpits are sacred spaces. So in a sense, yes, there are those who have compromised. But, you know, as Augustine said, we don't judge a philosophy by its abuse. So we have to stay focused. So I would say that uh, indeed, uh, especially a section of the, uh, the evangelical church, did the country wrong by taking money in the, in the, in the guise of harambes and so on. But that does not represent the entire church. And I must keep reminding you that I am a strong evangelical Christian myself, and I have been speaking for the church when it does right, and against the church when right. it does wrong, including uh, when um, you had clergy going to state house to, you know, cleanse state house or whatever it was. I think um, I was the first to come out and say, Ruto was overdoing religion. Right. You can check my case. You, so, you, 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 uh, you, you're on record, absolutely. I, I want to come back to you, but first, I want to go to Ngina Kiroyu, who has filed a report for us on State House today, say that it has not received that refunded cash that the Catholic Church of Soweto said to refund yesterday. Uh, see, they're looking forward to that cash. Let's listen to Ngina Kiroyu before we get back to this interview. 
Once a darling of the church and vice versa, President William Ruto's rapport with the church ran parallel to his campaigns while contesting for the highest seat in the land. However, at the forefront of the recent criticism of the head of state has been the Catholic Church, which blatantly told the president to stop the culture of perpetuating lies and using state machinery to abduct citizens. Less than a week later, the church once again pronounced itself on its view of the conduct of the government after President William Ruto donated 600,000 published. The presence of God was also awesome. Others who have made their stand clear with the government include Bishop Teresia Wairimo, who is among those from the church who are once allied to President William Ruto. With the Anglican Church also throwing its weight behind the sentiments by the Catholic Church, it would appear that a Pandora's box was opened over the disgruntlement many a people have with the Commander-in-Chief and they are only among the latest to air them. We stand in solidarity with the Catholic bishops and all religious institutions and individuals that have come out to call truth to power. And we totally agree with them and we want to urge them to remain bold and strong. Today, Moses Courier, the Senior Advisor Council of Economic Advisors at Statehouse, put out a tweet on his official platform on X, stating that, My two roles as a Roman Catholic who has gone through the catechism process from baptism, Holy Eucharist, altar boy to confirmation. Rule number one, the Catholic Church is always right. Rule number two, in case the Catholic Church is wrong, refer to rule number one. That even internal members of the president's government have shown camaraderie with the opinions and actions of the church points to more scrutiny in the days ahead for President William Ruto. Ngena Kirori, NTV. And let's get back to this conversation I was having with Ruben Kigame all the way in the U.S. And, and the question is this, uh, Mr. Kigame, that the church really has a long road to walk back to to gain the trust and the confidence of not only the flock but the Kenyan people because of this camaraderie, if you like, of the conflation, if you like, with politics. Would you accept that there is a lot of work to be done by the church to get back the confidence of the public? Not at all. I think we are equivocating on the issue of who the church is. And that's why I keep saying if 10 pastors or even make them 100 went to Karen and received envelopes, uh, you know, loaded with money. That is not representative of the church. Oh, no, it is not. And uh, so I would like to be very, very firm on that, that uh, the church has not abdicated. And two years out of the script of uh, the church's record in this country does not add up to all the years the church has stood for the people and with the people. And so I, I, would, I would like to say Indeed, there are. I know some, uh, you know, pastors that actually received money. I also know some who opened the pulpit, uh, you know, for politicians to speak. And some of the churches are really in poor places, so they need the money. Yes, but that does not represent what the church is. And so I would say the church does not have, you know, such a long time to redeem itself. As you can see, when the Catholic bishops spoke, the whole country listened. In fact, the problem is now uh, those who are so negative, you know, to the church are saying that uh, the, the action is hypocritical. It is not hypocritical. It is in keeping with what the church should always have done. And so I would say I don't think I would accuse, especially the Catholic bishops at all and uh, leaders of uh, uh, several evangelical churches I don't think I would accuse them of siding with the government. And let's always remember that even if you took all the church leaders in Kenya and they supported the government, you have all these faithfuls from which throng they are, they are chosen that have not sided with the government. And so we have to really remember that the church is not these uh, uh, edifices that we see out there. The church is not you know, five pastors standing up to say we support Ruto. Oh, no. The church is what is in consonance with the word of God as is written in the Bible. The problem is the government never listens. People like uh, uh, 
Canon uh, Wainaina, Sami Wainaina, have been speaking from the All Saints Cathedral. We still say the church is in, you know, in, in, in bed with the government. I've been, I've been speaking. You can see people out, you know, speaking against the government. But everyone, you know, likes the juicy stuff, you know, the five that go to receive the money. So that becomes the church. No, it's not. Uh, Ruben, there's, there's, I mean, it's, it's a matter of, of, of one's interpretation, and, and I would accept that. There's I don't some, think it's an interpretation. Because, uh, because, because there's a pushback here, then who's, who's the church? If you say a thousand pastors don't constitute the church, then who does? So, so the church, if you want to go technical, really the church is the people who worship Christ. And they're not fi found within walls. Some of them worship under the trees. So uh, if you were to institutionalize, then we begin to have problems. Because then some people speak on behalf of those who don't even hold that position. So uh, maybe let's just go back and ask this question. I am a Christian. I'm a serious, committed, evangelical Christian as Ruben Kigale. When have you ever seen me supporting this government? This particular, I was on the race in 2022. They locked me out actively. I am a Christian. What was the problem? The problem was Ruto's camp fearing that we would divide the vote the church vote. Ruben, I, I want to take you to the opposite side of it, and this should be possibly my last question, on the phrases right. and how the campaigning in churches has been used, not just in the last election, but in previous elections. We've seen politicians right. coming and getting blessings and saying leadership not only comes from God, using scriptures, specific scriptures, and saying we were prayed in, we got here because we are believers, and that sort of thing. Aren't you Talk to me around just the sanctity and the cleanness of using these phrases and the word of God and how, you know, you're prayed in and that sort of thing with the confidence the public really then has with what you call the church and the committed Christianity. Because the difference between these two things. Right. So there is, in principle, nothing wrong for a bishop or, uh, you know, a pastor praying for, you know, those that are running for office. The problem is that some of them take sides. If you're going to pray a prayer for those running for election, then you pray for all. You don't elevate uh, one side and then, you know, demonize the other. The way they were saying, you know, kwa ruto ni maombi na kwa iraila ni uchau. That is really bad propaganda because in both camps, there were some of us, you know, who, who actually believed that uh, Ruto, is, I mean, uh, Raila is a good Anglican. So you have people like that. So what I would emphasize, though, is that those spaces should be left sacred and nobody should take, uh, you know, uh, politics to the pulpit at all. And pastors and bishops should be on record. In fact, they need to sign memoranda, perhaps with the congregants, that politicians will not actually go to the pulpit. If you remember the days of Moy, we blame Moy for so many things, but he would not make those statements as ex cathedra No. He would go outside and make the statements out there. They would even say, KBC to announce Moy alikuwa kanisani. But, you know, those statements were not main, mainstay. Now, Ruto and his team and all these other politicians, even in the opposition, go to church and the pastors give them pulpits. It is wrong. That should not be done. Let them make the statements out there, all the political statements, make them out there, leave the houses of God without political rhetoric. All right. Ruben Kigabe, leader, Jengam Kenya Movement. Thank you very much for your thoughts this evening. Thank you very much for those insights.